All last week, as you may know, we started the show with your questions. We want viewer questions and feedback, and we want to thank you for continuing to send in your questions and comments across all of our social media platforms. That's right, and today we're going to discuss something that one of our viewers actually sent into our inbox. Andrew, not, not this Andrew, not, not this Andrew, another Andrew emailed in asking, I was raised Catholic and used to go to church. Recently, a friend invited me to go to his church. I'm not sure what to do. How do I know if it's a good church? Yeah. Which I think is a really good question. Great question, yeah. great question. A lot yeah. of people in their own churches ask, is this where I should yeah, be? Exactly. One thing I would suggest is just real quick, yeah. remember how tough a time this is for pastors and churches. Yes. It is a very different, yes. once COVID hit, it changed church life. A oh lot of churches yeah. have people that haven't come back. Mm -hmm. They wanna watch on social media instead. Yeah, exactly. And just try and avoid the church shopping experience. You know, mm. Ashley, I know you've heard people say, well, I'm church shopping yes, right now. for sure. I mm -hmm. understand the mentality, but it means mm -hmm. it's all about you. Exactly. As opposed to what you yes. can give. So just try and avoid the I'm shopping for a church Yeah, and it's, it's easy to do that now, especially because of social media, right? Uh, like every sure. church is online. Every church is mm -hmm. streaming at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. But I actually phoned this one in, y'all. I contacted my pastor and I said, hey, Pastor, pastor Steve, that's what I call him PS for short. I'm like, hey, what from a pastor's perspective, what is a good church? And this is what he said. So he gave me, uh, he hit me with some scriptures. So this is 1 Corinthians well, 12. Good. I know, right? <laughs> that's good that the pastor hit me with some scriptures. All right, 1 Corinthians 12, 18 says, but now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. So he reminded me, that it's not us choosing a church, but God mm -hmm. choosing the church for us, right? So we have to ask, Lord, are you calling me to this yeah. church? Not yeah. does it, you know. Does it suit my needs? Exactly, it's, it's, it's asking the Lord, Lord, do you want to use me here? You know, so that's another thing. And then also my pastor recently posted this um, quote on his social media, and I just thought it was so good. So it says, stop looking for the perfect church. Can I get an amen? amen. Go worship a perfect God today with the congregation of flawed people who need grace as much as you do. And I just feel like that encompasses so much right now when, I mean, church hurt is real. Yeah. We're not negating that, um, you know, official, you know, leaders in the church, uh, could do some things that may hurt you, but at the same time, people are imper we're, yeah. we're imperfect, you know? As we're, long as we're... people are in a church, it's not gonna be a perfect exactly. church. Exactly, sure. exactly. So I just thought that was that was really mm -hmm. good. Shout out to Pastor Steve, Pastor Steve Bellavia, Relate Church, that's my church. So right. yeah, P.S. <laughs> and another thing too, like is, I'm not talking about your church. I'm, I'm so glad you asked the pastor. That's great. A lot of churches, you have to be careful who's being worshiped. Is it the pastor or yes. is it Jesus? Is Jesus so at good. the heart? of what the church is doing. Is yeah. he the heartbeat? And is the church serving? Mm, exactly, um, yeah. And you know, some of, sometimes when people go church shopping, they, mm -hmm. they walk in late maybe, sit in the back, mm. and then leave early and say, nobody talked to me. And it's easy to blame the church, yes. they weren't welcoming. Yeah. But you need to be in a position to be welcomed. So Absolutely. just try not to look for things the church is doing wrong. But as, as Ash, Ashley said, and her pastor said, God, is this where you want me? Can yeah. I contribute here as yeah. well? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I had a follow-up question. This is from Leah on Instagram. She asked, how do you know if you're in a toxic church mm. and what do you do? Well, I think you just kind of touched on that, especially because that's another thing that my pastor had mentioned. You know keeping, seeing if Jesus is center stage. Again, like you said, it, are they worshiping the pastor or are they worshiping the Lord? Because it needs to be the Lord. And if it's, if it's not that, then maybe that's not a very healthy, spirit-filled, Christ-centered church, you know? And is gossip just out of control? I mean, mm -hmm. people talk. This is one of Christianity's big faults is gossip. Yeah. People talking mm -hmm. about each other to each other. So mm -hmm. get a sense of the, you can get a sense of the health of the church that way too. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then what do you do about it? Well, it's perhaps as opposed to always going to the senior pastor. I mean, they're so mm. busy. They're so yeah. overwhelmed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these people have families too. Maybe yeah. there's a deacon you can seek out mm -hmm. or a trusted uh, woman or man in the church who's been exactly. there a long time. Get, yes. their, get some perspective yeah. before you just bring it to the top. But certainly mm -hmm. if it's a church you feel like is damaging your walk, Mm. Uh, it's perhaps better to find something else, but but don't always be so certain that this church isn't for me because somebody said exactly. something unkind. Um, exactly. We're all fallible, so exactly. these are these are big, important questions and topics. Yeah. We want to be fed at a church, but are we doing anything to give back? And exactly. Serve? I think that's key: is to remember, you know, before you make a rash decision of leaving a church or saying this isn't for me, 
put your like get involved plant yourself yeah, see how life you groups. yeah exactly life groups community groups um you know volunteering is huge let's not mm -hmm. forget that local churches need volunteers and there's power in the local church i can't tell you how beneficial my walk with Jesus has been because of my involvement in my local church, because of the community that's there, because of the relationship that I have with my pastor. So I would just encourage everyone who's watching, if you're not plugged into a local church, get plugged in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, if you would like to ask us a question or give us a topic to talk about on the show like we just did, make sure you visit our social media pages. Look for our different posts on the different platforms, such as Facebook and Instagram, at 700 Club Interactive. You can visit our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash 700 Club Interactive for extended interviews and stories and clips like this. If you want to watch them back, take some notes, send it to a friend. We encourage you guys to do so. Experience God on a new level. Empowering the believer is what this podcast is really all about. Discover insights into scriptures. Be encouraged by inspiring testimonies. I was caught up in a white cloud and couldn't walk or talk. The Lesson with Gordon and Ashley. I want to impart that so that people can have their own direct connection. Learn more about what God has for you. The Lesson on CBNFamily.com and YouTube. It's a great podcast. It is called The Lesson, and Ashley and Gordon share scriptures, testimonies, and spiritual truths. And new episodes are released every Wednesday. You can find The Lesson on YouTube or on your favorite podcast provider. You can also watch every episode on cbn.com slash The Lesson. I encourage you to do so. Ashley. All right. Well, Lisa Turkhurst has written best-selling books, has made dozens of TV appearances, and has been the featured speaker at countless events. Even though she's had a successful career, Lisa was haunted by something else. Lies other people had spoken over her. Hi, I'm Lisa Turkhurst, and one of my favorite verses is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. I like that verse so much because I know what it feels like to be brokenhearted. I know what it feels like to be crushed in spirit. And oftentimes it's because rejection has come into my life. And I believe that rejection is something that we all deal with, whether we're male, female, old, young, it doesn't matter, rejection affects us deeply. We're all either dealing with a past rejection, trying to heal from a present day rejection, or fearing that an unexpected rejection is right around the corner. Someone speaks a line to us, a statement of rejection, and that line, L-I-N-E, turns into a lie. That lie that I believe about myself turns into a label that I put on myself. And that label becomes a liability in all future relationships. Well, I think it's time that that we really tackle some of these lines that have turned into lies, that have turned into labels, that have turned into a liability. We ask the Lord, Lord, what are some of the dysfunctional dances that I'm doing in my life? What are some of the liabilities that I'm bringing into my day to day because of the rejections of my past? Lord, will you reveal that lie to me? so that I can let you speak. I know you are close to those places in my heart that have broken. And I know, Lord, that you want to save those places that have crushed me in spirit. So Lord, speak truth over those lies. Where can you, Lord, untangle some lies that I can take the labels that they've created off of me so that this will no longer be a liability, but rather a source of transformation in my life. a good reminder. What lies have you been believing about yourself recently? Is it that God doesn't love you? Is it that you're not worthy? Is it the rejection from others in this world that has caused you to believe that? Is it from your past relationships filled with rejection and heartbreak? Whatever it is, I just feel the Lord wanting to heal your heart today. Just like Lisa said from the Psalms, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. 
He lifts up the crushed in spirit. And that only happens by receiving his love. Receive his love today. And I love also what Lisa encouraged us to do is to ask the Lord to reveal those things to us. Lord, what lies have I been believing about you, about myself that's holding me back in life that keeps me in this bitter, dark place? God has a hope and a future for you, friend. And once we receive the love of God, not just know in our heads that God loves us, but know in our heart of hearts that God loves me. He he is devoted to me. I am the apple of his eye. I am his beloved and he is mine. If it's hard for you to receive that today, I want to pray for you. And I want to pray alongside you because I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal the truth today. And we're going to pray that the Lord uproots anything that was never planted by him in the first place. And that he continues to till the soil of our hearts to receive seeds of faith that are going to go grow deep so that you may be rooted and grounded in love. Pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now that you reveal to me the lies that I have been believing about you and about myself. God, Holy Spirit, will you you wash over me right now? Will you touch my heart like never before? Will you touch my mind like never before, Jesus? Lord God, I ask in Jesus' name, that you uproot any lie from the enemy, any lie from this world, any line that has been spoken to me over individuals, God. I pray that those things are uprooted from my heart and my mind in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name, I cancel any assignment from the enemy that would try to separate me from the love of God. And I receive the truth that I am loved, I am chosen, and I am your beloved. In Jesus' name, I pray all of this. Amen and amen. If you just prayed that prayer with me and you want to continue to pray about this, please give us a call at 1-800-700-7000. We have amazing prayer warriors on the line, literally 24-7, ready to stand alongside of you in prayer. Just give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Andrew? Well, 14,000 feet up Mount Rainier, Mark and Brad were stuck. And the two had begun their descent when they ran into a freak blizzard. Soon they were alone in an icy cave with winds whipping around them and frostbite setting in and no one out there to help. Mark Duggan and his friend Brad Davidson were trapped in a snow cave on Mount Rainier in Washington. Just seven hours earlier, they were climbing up with no problems at all. The weather was clear when we left. Everything was gorgeous. Um, It was picture perfect. Starting at Paradise Trailhead, they hiked to Camp Muir at 10,080 feet, where they made camp for two days. The third day, the two climbed to the summit and took a few photos before heading back down the mountain. That's when the weather took a drastic turn. The wind was blowing really hard. Uh, You couldn't see. I mean, your visibility was maybe 30, 30 feet or something. The conditions were deteriorating really quickly. As experienced climbers, Mark and Brad had food, water, and survival gear to get them through the storm. But they only brought enough provisions for three days. Seven, eight minutes of this, and I'm like, Brad, we've got to start digging a hole because if this storm lets up, great. We'll go down in an hour if it lets up. But if this sets in on us and stays here, we got to get out. We can't stay in this uh, weather. So at that point, then we started uh, looking for a spot to build a, dig a snow cave, and then we started digging. The storm didn't give up and they dug for seven hours in blizzard conditions. They were now trapped in the ice cave at an elevation of 14,100 feet. You couldn't roll over, you couldn't raise your knee, you couldn't move your arm. I mean, it was just this, but it kept us alive. But I do remember that evening uh, that we just prayed for wisdom, that we would know the next thing to do, that we would act decisively and with intention That night, they decided to activate Mark's distress beacon. It's not going to a cell signal. It definitely is going to a satellite. But when you push it, no, you have no idea if anybody is getting it. 
The signal was received and Mark and Brad's families were notified by the park rangers. They also learned conditions were too dangerous to send out a search party. Mark's wife, Julie, was staying with her parents when she got the call. I was extremely shocked. You don't ever expect something to go wrong or happen. And there just were no answers at that time, just speculation about what it could be. During the night, Brad got out once an hour to remove the snow and ice the storm was dumping on the makeshift cover of their cave. I was really concerned about the weight of that just kind of caving in on us. And we would either die of suffocation in our sleep because there's no airflow coming in, or it would basically, basically collapse on us and we create our own avalanche on ourselves. For the next two days, the only thing anyone could do was wait and pray. I prayed a lot about breathing because of altitude sickness, which turned out to be really incredible because that was a very difficult thing for Mark in that tight space. The other thing that I remember we prayed was just for our families, that they would just kind of have uh, peace because there's no way they could know anything about our position or the state of how we were or if anybody was hurt. Julie asked a friend to get the message out to pray. Sound the alarm was all that I had said to her. And she texts back, I already have. There were so many people praying. You know, I had had that fear of everyone's going to bed. And we actually had a team of people we knew in Uganda at the time. And I remember at midnight emailing uh, one of the people on the team because I thought, oh, they're getting up. They're wide awake. They will, they will pray through the night. The weather finally cleared. Mark and Brad had been trapped for three days, and frostbite had begun to set in when they started the climb back down to base camp. 45 minutes later, the two friends saw a welcome sight. A rescue chopper was coming their way. They were going to come up there and collect bodies. And then to find us up moving down the mountain was joy for them, because they were like, this is good. You know, We're going to get some live people off this mountain today. It was overwhelming, I guess, in some, because you just live through these days of uh, just exhaustion, and everything's just changed. Meanwhile, Julie was flying in from Tennessee. During the flight, she felt like God was telling her everything would be OK. The plane landed, and the texts were uh, flooding in. And one of the very first things I saw was a picture of Mark and his dad. And I was like, he's so OK. He's so OK, you know? Because even though my, I had felt the Lord saying that day to me that that was the day of his glory, and in my heart that meant he would be rescued, I couldn't imagine he would be that OK. Dehydrated, hungry, and suffering mild frostbite, Mark and Brad were flown to a Seattle hospital. There, Julie and others from both families came, overjoyed to be safe with those they loved. It was just smiles <laughs> as wide as you can imagine, and uh, just great, great joy to be together. I mean, it wasn't like they just drove for 30 minutes in their car. I mean, they flew halfway, they flew across the country. Um, to come and just be there uh, with us. Mark still loves to climb when he's not home with Julie and their two children. Looking back at his time on Mount Rainier, Mark is thankful for how God protected and provided for himself and his friend. We dug this hole in the ground for seven hours and we both had shovels like this uh, that we used to dig. And, and there's two pins here. This lower pin holds it while you're using it. And it worked the whole time for seven hours. But when I got down off the mountain, when I looked at the shovel and tried to extend it, uh, the tab here was broken. And it's no explanation for how that is broken, but it functioned the whole time. So for me personally, I look at this and just, it's one of those miraculous moments. And I, I look at this now and it's just a reminder um, of what I see as God's faithfulness. He's also thankful for how God answered the many prayers of friends and family. The Lord was faithful in giving us the wisdom of what to be about and what to do to stay alive, and then to give peace to our families and to our kids and just his watch care over them and just his, his kindness when we were, you know, up on the mountain. It was really evident uh, to us.
What a story, Mark. And his friend up on that mount, you know, it's not uncommon for people in that situation in a freezing environment with frostbite, getting hypothermia, all these things, lack of provisions, to simply give up. People have chosen just to give up and die, their friends have said in that situation. Mark did not, and people were praying for him. And I don't know the situation you are in today or your loved one, and people may be getting fatigued by it, maybe even fatigued in praying. Well, there are many, many watching today who want to pray with Ashley and I for your situation. We've had people who have reported great miracles. We're going to read some now. Here is Trisha on YouTube. She said, I had brain surgery in 2007 to remove a tumor in my brain stem. I was left with many issues, but the two largest were constant dizziness and my right arm movement impaired because nerves to my triceps were severed. I'd graduated from a wheelchair to a walker and then finally a cane that I've needed to use for 14 years. I continually prayed for healing. Last spring, I woke up and stretched, which was weird since I literally wasn't able to due to my arm. I now have no pain in my right arm and I'm building back strength and mobility. I also am no longer dizzy and gave away my canes. Wow, walk. that Amen. is incredible. Well, this is Victoria on YouTube, and she says, when I was 14 years old, I was hit by a car. In the hospital, I had brain swelling and injury while in the intensive care unit. The neurologist told my mom if I came through, I would have permanent issues. God saved my life, and there were no lasting neurological issues. That is incredible. God is good. And I was just reminded of a scripture, watching that story, hearing those other testimony stories. It's the parable that Jesus shares. It's the importune widow. And it's Luke 18, 6 through 7. And it says, and, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Uh, in that story you just saw, the wife was praying day and night. She reached out to her friends in Uganda who were up. You know, it was total time change difference, but they were praying. They continuously prayed and they saw the miracle that they were expecting to see. The widow in this story kept knocking on that judge's door, asking for justice, seeking justice. And finally, the, the judge goes, okay, I'm going to give her what she wants. How much more will your heavenly father who loves you, who is just, who is merciful, how much more will he answer your prayers and your cries if you just continue to press in? Right now, Andrew and I are going to press in for you. So whatever your need is, put your hand on that area of your body that you're suffering from pain, whatever it is, bring that to the forefront of your mind and we're going to pray for you. Mm -hmm. Heavenly father, we thank you for being the righteous judge. Thank you for being just. Thank you for being merciful. Thank you for being our savior, the one who always hears our cries day and night. Thank you, Jesus, for healing us. Thank you, Jesus, for setting us free from any emotional trauma right now. Anyone who's watching who is suffering from anxiety and depression, we just cancel that in the name of Jesus. And we pray for your spirit, Lord your love to flow over them like never before in tangible ways, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, thank you for that thank word you. to Ashley. Thank and you, so Jesus. off of that, Lord, God, I wanna pray for the caregivers, those who are praying for their dear one, for healing for them, for salvation, for breaking free of the bondage of addiction. I pray for those praying for others who may be growing weary and doing good. You yeah. say, keep on knocking, keep mm -hmm. on asking, keep on seeking. So we pray for those to keep on praying. It's those very prayers that have made the difference to today. And yes. Lord God, we ask for answers and miracles, Father God. Yes, God. Thank you for your faithfulness. We do mm. not give up. Yes, Lord. And I just believe someone's watching with, uh, you have a horrible issue with migraines. They keep coming back. You're asking for release. You're asking for the Lord to heal you. I believe that today is the day that you will be healed from this, these migraines. You won't have them anymore. They're so bad, you have to turn out the lights, cover your eyes, all of that. No, in Jesus' name, be healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. You will not have those migraines. Migraines do not come back over her in the name of Jesus. For Thank those you, in shame because of decisions they've made and sins committed and, and actions taken, uh, I just feel like the Holy Spirit wants to remind you today, you don't need to clean yourself up before you come before the Lord. Come before the Lord and He will cleanse you. Cleansing is from the cross. Nothing you can do to earn it, it's from the cross, the, the price Jesus paid. 
Yes, Kneel Lord. at the cross in Jesus' name. Jesus amen. Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, if you just were healed, if the Lord has touched you, please give us a call at 1 800 700 7000. Share your good report. And we leave you with this scripture from Psalm 37 39. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord, He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.